Hi, I'm getting ready for the American Society of Engineering Education conference this week. And my first task is to get ready for my workshop tomorrow. Um, the evolution of tools and enabling effective remote laboratory delivery in engineering curricula. And I'm supposed to be simulating being a student. So I wanted to make a reaction video. So thank you analog devices for shipping me my ADALM 2000 active learning module. I notice you sometimes also call it MK2. Not sure what the difference is between those. So maybe that's something I'll find out tomorrow. So the first thing I've done is I've installed my software and I've connected it and I have my Scopey running. And now I need to build my circuit. So the first thing I will say is that this isn't totally like being a student anymore because my old eyes cannot read these capacitors and find the 103, but I'll keep hunting and come back with an update later. So one thing I will share is that it would have been helpful um, if the breadboard didn't come like this, because when it arrived, there was nothing on the foam and there are all these chips on the breadboard. The challenge with that is I can't build anything because the proto board is populated already. So now I have to take time to figure out where to put these parts while being concerned about ESD. I'm probably gonna try to fit as many as I can on the top and bottom of here. And I did get my magnifying glass and my flashlight from my cell phone. So I have all my parts. So as soon as I can get the proto board cleaned up, I'm ready to start building my circuit. Okay, so here are my first three connections. And it is the op amp, the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor in series with the potentiometer. Next, I'm going to wire up R3, R4, and my two diodes and check back in. All right, the negative feedback part or the bottom half of my circuit is now done. I have my two diodes. I have a 10 kilo ohm and the 4.7 kilo ohm as part of the negative feedback network. And this is what it looks like. I'm trying to keep everything as flat as possible so it's easy to see what's going on here. All right. Let's work on the positive feedback. Okay, I think I now have my low pass filter built, so I hope I'm not mixing that up. That's R2 in parallel with C2 going to pin three. So here's my 10 nanofarad in parallel with my 10 kilo ohm, R2 and C2. Okay, this is what I get for not planning this out better. If I would have planned better, I would have put the things going to pin two on the left and the things going to pin three on the right, but I didn't, so they're crisscrossed. So I have to move some things around, but here is my totally completed circuit. And now I'm going to watch the video to figure out how to add the power from the MK2. Okay, so now I'm doing something I know a typical student would never do. I ripped my circuit apart and I'm going to rebuild it to look nicer because it was just really bugging me. So I'm starting over. But this time I'll just post it after all the elements are completed and I'm ready to do my wiring to the power. All right, that didn't take too long, maybe five minutes at the most, but I've now rebuilt the circuit to look a little neater, hopefully, so that you can actually see where all the parts are located without so many crisscrosses. I used an extra wire. I think I'm ready now to do the power. Okay, I had to use some needle nose pliers to break the header pins because it was one pin too many. So I've done that now and I've added a voltage bus and a negative voltage bus. And then for pin 11 on the op amp, I'm just gonna stick that one straight in. So positive voltage from the red is going to go into here negative voltage from the red which is red stripe is going to go into here and then i have one of the header pins that i broke off so it'll be a single i'm going to put that single into pin 11. wait a minute nope 
Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to find a single header pin that I broke off to put in 11. And so actually, I'm going to have the ground bus and the positive voltage bus on here. So that's the black wire. And then the negative voltage bus is going to go to pin 11. So this is what I have so far. And now I need to add the wires. So I'm going to have a red wire that goes from pin four to my positive voltage. And I'm going to use a black wire that goes from the ground to several different spots. So I'm going to have one that comes from the 10 nanofarad in parallel with the 10 kilo ohm. 10 nanofarad in parallel with the 10 kilo ohm. That's right here. And that goes to ground. I'm going to have one for the other leg of my potentiometer. And that goes to here. And I think I now have all of my power. I don't have V out hooked up yet. Um, that's going to be the oscilloscope, which I believe is going to be either the orange and orange stripe or the blue and the blue stripe or are those the w's i'm not sure i gotta check i'm not sure about that but this is what i have so far all of my power is hooked up except for the oscilloscope which is going to be at pin one to measure my output okay let's see which one that is all right, so my question was answered. I have um, channel one and two of the oscilloscope hooked up now. I have all my grounds hooked up. The only thing that's not hooked up yet is the function generator or the waveform generator. And one piece of advice or feedback I already have is a larger breadboard would not have hurt my feelings because we got a lot going on here. A lot going on. Let's keep going. Almost done, I think. Okay, the video is starting to go a little fast, which is making it a little bit hard to follow. But let me see if I can figure out how to get this to five volts. Hopefully I can just type it because that would be way easier than trying to do that scroll wheel. And I want this one to be negative five volts. Okay, yeah, that's way better because that scroll wheel is not working on my computer touch pad. Okay. So I think I'm not supposed to enable this yet. So let me stop and see what's supposed to happen next here. All right, it's not totally clear how I get channel one and channel two to show up. I think I was probably changing the values for channel two and didn't realize it. So how do I get channel one to show up? How do I get channel one settings over here? What am I missing here? I didn't see where he did that. Okay. So channel two is supposed to be, I think at 500 millivolts per division. Where is channel one? How do I set channel one? Do I turn channel two off? Then will channel one show up? Oh, okay. So that's 200 microsecond time base, one volt per division. Okay, so I guess once you turn on channel two, I don't know, I have no clue. 
But anywho, um, I have it set up correctly now. So. All right, here's my first veil. Um, I thought I was super duper careful in wiring this puppy up, but close but no cigar. I got nothing. I've turned this pot totally clockwise. I've turned this pot totally counterclockwise and I'm getting no signal. So I now need to step back and check the wiring for this whole thing and see if I can figure out why my oscillator's not going. Um, the oscilloscope is on. Okay, we're gonna try this again. So what we found was wrong was that pin one of the op amp is just saturated with stuff and there weren't enough nodes for me to get everything on pin one. So one of them was off, so I had to make a mini bus on another row for that. So that's what was wrong with that. So first thing I wanna do is make sure that my power supply is still set correctly. It appears to be. Um, I'm gonna assume the oscilloscope is also still set correctly. Um, it appears to be. I guess everything's still running. Not so sure about the visual cues for running and not running, but um, I guess my test will be, I'm gonna adjust the oscilloscope, sorry, the potentiometer. We'll see if anything happens this time, and if not, I don't know. This is also a very tiny screwdriver, but that's for another day. Um, I see nothing happening. I don't know, maybe my power really isn't on. I don't know. I've now built the circuit three times though. And I got nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, let me make sure the power is really on. How do I know? Is it just that checkbox? Disable, enable, disable, enable. This isn't at five volts anymore. Or is it? Oh, this is millivolts. Well, why is that one volts? Is that what's, what's, what's wrong? Maybe. Okay, let's go back to the oscilloscope. Nope, you go away. I don't even know what you do. Go away. Um, Two hundred micro. Okay. Now that the power seems to be fixed. Let's try this again. Nope, I'm not getting any kind of oscillation whatsoever. It's 500 millivolts per division. Let me check the settings for both channels again. Hmm. I think an auto trigger would also be helpful. But I don't know if this is working or not. Um. Maybe I need to do some debugging. I'm not sure what else I can do. Check the circuit multiple times. Built the circuit multiple times. I think, uh-oh, I think we are out of luck here. Other than turning the potentiometer, I got nothing. And I do have ground connected. 
everything's connected up through not including w1 and w2 i can put the other ground on here to see if that does something i kind of doubt it though hmm okay well dude i don't know i don't know what to tell you i got nothing I think I want to end my um, lab by saying that was an epic fail, right? Um, I have taught remotely um, controls, circuits, one, two, signals and systems, um, and probably that's it, maybe a little bit of senior design. And I've used the MIDAC, and I've also used Digilent boards, which I think this technology is pretty similar to. And so far, those seem to be easier. I don't know if it's more familiarity or it's easy to trace um, and debug, but I think, like I said originally, part of it is starting with such a complicated circuit. Maybe let's get our, our confidence up by building an inverting amplifier and let me see that I understand how all the lab equipment works for that and then work our way up to the oscillator but starting with the oscillator not knowing how to trace points not sure what to even check to see if it's correct made this kind of disheartening in fact i'm so inspired i may just build a quick inverting amplifier just to make sure that that works because i don't know if the op amps burn out i i don't know i don't know if there a diode could be bad a resistor a wire i just don't know and so after investing a couple hours on this, I think it's time to pack up the wagon and head out of town. But thank you for the kit. All right, here's my update. I think I now have the tools I need to finish this. Turns out some breadboards don't connect, don't have a bus that connects all the way across. So once I fixed um, that connection point with the breadboard, it's all good. So I'm going to mark this breadboard up, get the project done, and report back with the good news. All right, people. Good news. We finally have liftoff. So I'm going to take my screwdriver. I'm going to adjust the potentiometer. And voila! We have an oscillator. I think I need to turn the measurements off. And make it bigger on the screen so that you can actually see what's going on here i'm obviously already saturating on channel one i don't have my diodes in because i wanted to make sure this thing was working but look at that beautiful oscillator so i'm going to get it to just the point of oscillation with no saturation. And I think I'm gonna to have to change channel one to be two volts per division so that you can see the whole thing. Or maybe even 1.5 volts per division. Ooh, yeah, it's already starting to saturate a little bit. So maybe go back just a skosh. Uh, come on. All right, this is without my diode, so Let's see if I can add the diodes back in. Now that I have a working circuit and see if I can get it to stop saturating so that we can then go on to the next step. I am just so happy to finally figure out what was wrong. So just to recap, one of them was is that that breadboard bus does not go all the way across the breadboard. I honestly had never seen a breadboard like that before, but maybe it's just me. You live and you learn. And the other thing was that my potentiometer, I did not have the wiper and one side of the potentiometer connected to ground. So I'm now going to put the two diodes in parallel across the 4.7 kilo ohm that goes to pin one. All right, I now have the diodes in. You notice it looks a little cleaner. There's no saturation. Let's turn it up. There's all the way down again. Now I'm turning it up. It does still saturate, but it doesn't saturate quite as quickly. 